con Simon Turner, gerente de producto de Land Rover para Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo estás, Simon? Muy bien, well, gracias. Espero que estés también. I am uh, enjoying Got the weather. <laughs> uh, I mean, actually, I'm not feeling it. It took us a while to get here because obviously Iceland is uh, the very north of the Atlantic Ocean, so it's not not near from home, let's say. But uh, we've been enjoying the not day too so far. much, and we've been keeping you moving. Absolutely, yeah. No time to sleep. <laughs> you can sleep later. You can always sleep later, right? Exactly. Especially here in Iceland, where we are today. Uh, we only get like four and a half hours of uh, sunlight, so we have to take advantage of that. Yeah, 10 a.m. till about four. I think your door is still open. Oops. No, 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 we're coming back in five minutes. We're just going to okay. uh, a little loop. So, Simon, a new vehicle for a Land Rover, uh, the Discovery, which is not a new name plate because it was already in the market before and it's still in other uh, markets outside the US, but this particular model completely new. Yes, uh, absolutely. The uh, Discovery Sport represents the first model in the new Discovery pillar in our lineup, so everybody recognizes Range Rover. We're moving in to renew our Discovery and reintroduce Discovery to the US. And then, of course, there's the Defender models, which uh, will come eventually, but they're further on down the road. So, again, Discovery Sport's the first model in the Discovery lineup for. Uh, Jaguar Land Rover in the, in the US. And so uh, this vehicle, we've been driving it today here in uh, Iceland from Reykjavik to here, two and a half hours, more or less about 250 kilometers, 160 miles, something like that. Uh, obviously it can go through anything. <laughs> we already drove through regular snow, regular streets, rain, uh, dirt like right now, ice, water, everything. I mean, so it's a typical performance by a Land Rover, right? Yeah, absolutely. So everybody expects uh, Land Rover to have the capability. This car's no exception. It can really conquer any terrain within reason. And Iceland's just a fantastic uh, uh, venue to showcase, uh, you know, how the vehicle performs. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the specs. I mean, what kind of engine? What what are the, the specifications of this car? So this car has um, a two-liter turbo four-cylinder engine with a nine-speed ZF gearbox. Um, Powerful little engine, 240 horsepower, lots of, lots of torque, um, and as you've probably hopefully seen today, the car can move when you need it to. So, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's fun to drive, it's really composed and dynamic on the road, and it has additional versatility, can carry up to seven passengers. Um, so, a really, really good competitive all round package, entering a fairly competitive segment in the US, the compact. Yeah, uh, premium segment. And uh, I was kind of surprised when I heard pricing. I mean, I think that if, if all the characteristics that you already mentioned are make it competitive, the pricing is pretty amazing. I mean, are you gonna can you talk about that, please? Yeah, I think uh, we are obviously focused on uh, improving the uh, penetration of this product in the market. So we have to be competitively priced, and we have to offer a really compelling uh, proposition for consumers who. Obviously, have a lot of choice. There's a lot of other great vehicles out there in the marketplace, so we need to be aggressively positioned, both with a competitive package, but also with really, really yeah. competitive pricing. So, what is it like? A thirty-eight thousand, I understand, for the base model. Yeah, just a hair under thirty-eight thousand uh, MSRP uh, delivery and destination charge on top of that, and the vehicle will go up to the low fifties, depending on which model and which options you. Get. So that fits in the home lineup of Land Rover. This is the entry level, and then you have the Evoque. Um, well, yes, we have Range Rover. Um, obviously, Range Evoque is a, a model within the Range Rover lineup. Yeah. This vehicle is really the uh, first of a new range of um, contemporary Land Rover products that will be introduced into the market. So, although it has similarities in some of the design and design language that you see um, it has similarities to other Land Rover and Range Rover products, it's very distinctly different and it's entering a, a, a segment which, will, which we're not currently represented in. So, um, yes. So, uh, in that Discovery family that you were mentioning, uh, this is the first one but there's it's com it's coming, uh, the LR4 is going to be replaced by the, what the rest of the world knows as the Discovery, right? Yes, exactly, and, and we will um, introduce Discovery into the US again as a 
a replacement for the LR4, but it will be a new, completely new, more contemporary design than the outgoing car. And again, we'll follow suit with the rest of the road world. We'll call uh, call a, the new model of the Discovery, and that will fit in line with this model, which is obviously called the Discovery Sport. So we'll have more of a family a range, of yeah, vehicles. Range, yeah. yes. So uh, that that's going to increase obviously your uh, lineup model and the presence in the market, but uh, you you have been doing really great lately, huh? Uh, 2014 was a great year for Land Rover. 2014, really, really good year, yes. Um, in fact, all of our products have been selling very well. Um, Range Rover and Range Rover Sport continue to do very well. Um, and, you know, days to, to turn uh, those products are market leading uh, we would like a little bit more supply we're working hard <laughs> to get it to satisfy yeah. those consumers that are in line but uh, even LR4 is sell, selling really well so every time we refresh um, we try to do the right things to keep the products uh, relevant to the consumers who are looking for it we try to make it better more luxurious and that uh, that strategy seems to resonate really well with uh, the US consumer that's the only uh, thing that I uh, feel kind of guilty with the uh when I drive on one of your programs or one of your vehicles, and they're so luxurious, but also so capable. You can throw them to water, to mud, and then I don't like getting them dirty. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I feel bad about it. I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. We all know what the products can do because we experience yeah. it. And, you know, one of the big draws for a consumer is knowing they're buying into the confidence that the vehicle yeah. inspires in them. And people want to know that if they do get into a sticky situation or and you know conditions that might require it the vehicle's going to be able to deliver yeah. every time and this one in particular compared to all the others i mean um, this is really big i mean this in the compact uh, cross the suv uh, segment but like as you said seven up to seven people uh, capacity and like a lot of space especially with this sunroof which i love which make it like even bigger yeah the panoramic roof just yeah. brings air into into the light into the inside of the car but you know, we've done some really clever packaging with this vehicle. We've used a relatively small platform, but by uh, designing the rear suspension in a very unique way, we've been able to eliminate some of the space intrusion that the rear suspension and struts yeah. normally take up. And by doing that, we've been able to package a very, very relevant third row in this vehicle, which, you know, is a first in the segment. There's nobody else offering plus two seating in this size of car so yeah. on the outside it doesn't look possible but when you get on the inside you'll see you can act not only access the third row relatively easily you can be comfortable but you can also optimize the space between the second and third row by sliding the second row forward if needs be so the third row is an option or it's come standard with every vehicle it is an option okay yes so, um, and the, in this vehicle, uh, besides the new design, I mean, everything is new in this one in particular, but like the new technology, the info infotainment system is also new? Yeah, the, the infotainment is new. It's uh, it just been introduced on, on this product. It will find its way onto other Jaguar Land Rover products, but it offers, uh, you know, a pretty competitive sound system, navigation, all the things that cons consumers uh, usually expect. So, um, in a in a very intuitive, easy to use uh, interface with a very um, in intuitive interface. So you mentioned this is coming up to the market. Uh, when it's going to be on sale? April May time frame. Uh, so as stock builds uh, will introduce and be on sale sometime in that time frame. Okay. And what's the schedule for the LR4 replacement? Do you have have you announced that? Do you have a already a date? Uh, we haven't announced that yet. That'll be a future uh, a future announcement, but. Uh, Obviously, the concepts have been introduced so, on yeah, a global we, stage, so everybody it, yeah. knows what's coming. Yeah. So we'll make those announcements as the time is right. Yeah, and speaking of announcements, uh, we were just in Detroit in the Auto Show a couple of weeks ago. You announced that you're bringing in the diesel technology that is like so popular in Europe and other countries. So it's finally coming to the US. Yes, our loyal consumers have been, been waiting a long time for yeah. us to bring diesel. So. I think uh, that will be uh, another very popular extension of Range Rover and Range Rover Sport, and really that will be the start of the proliferation of diesel engines on a widespread basis across all of our Jaguar and Land Rover products. Excellent. Well, uh, if uh, 2014 was a great year with the introduction of this car and what it's coming, it seems that you're going to 
be having a couple, at least more than that, for I'm sure. Uh, very good years. Huh? The, the new product pipeline is full and we'll be continuing to roll out products uh, on an ongoing basis at yeah. a fairly aggressive level. And you are growing, uh, your manufacturing, uh, your manufacturing uh, capacity is growing also not outside England too, right? I mean, you're, there's plans at least uh, for plants in Brazil, you're already building in China. Yes, we have uh, plans for Brazil. We have actually opened a facility in China now, and we have plans for India also. And there will be other developments on that front as time goes forward, uh, when when the time is right. Excellent. Well, Simon, thank you very much. We're going to keep enjoying uh, driving in Iceland while we still have light. Uh, we still have a couple hours of that. So um, thank you very much for your time and information, and um, congratulations again. A beautiful vehicle and a lot of success for Land Rover. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.